and welcome to the He Doesn't Want a Podcast. The podcast is sponsored by Learners Ross Driving School and Drumbo Park Racecourse. Today I'm here with Chrissy Stewart, who is from Finicky Football Club. Mate, how are you keeping all good? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Not too bad, you? Not bad, not bad. Sure, we've had a, another lockdown and more football called off. Um, we're meant to be starting at the start of January. Are you looking forward to this season or have you, has it been a wee bit of an anti-climax where it's been stop-start? Uh, it's getting very frustrating to be honest you know we're we're actually having a a, a management meeting tomorrow between myself uh, John the guy who runs the, the first team with me uh, Jamie and Clarky the two guys who run the seconds yeah. just to see where we're at at the minute you know it's I think we came back uh, I think it was 20, 29th or something of June you know yeah. which is a long time ago everyone hadn't seen each other from March so Everyone was busting to get back. Things went really well. Got to play some games. Uh, then obviously this latest lockdowns happened and we started back then the non-contact stuff, which yeah. you know, you know, after one week, we have a good group who want to train and be fit, but you have to have a football, you know what I mean? And the non-contact stuff was it was it was shit, like let's be yeah. honest, you know, it was it was no good. So then, obviously, we're, we're at the stage now, and I see teams looking for for friendlies and all the twelfth and nineteenth. And I'll be honest, I I think we're in a situation where we're just going to call it quits until after Christmas. To be honest, you know. Yeah, it it, it seems to be as well that looking from a outside a football perspective, where they're opening everything up for Christmas, but they're expecting the RE at the race, and they haven't ruled out another lockdown in January. So. Has to come. Is there going to be another lockdown? And then, well, that will obviously affect us then. When will we get playing? Um, I've seen that the letter come out from Amateur League last week saying they are going to request to extend the league the end of June, which will give us yeah. a bit of time to play the league. But yeah, yeah. there was a Fermanagh League come out that said that uh, they've not avoided their whole league yeah, for the same. season. Yeah, which... you actually play one, or were due to play Killen? Yeah, due to play Killen there. I seen that they they just pull the plug. Now I think they're going to try and play. They've two or three cups. I think yeah. down there. So I think they're they're talking about trying to, to play them. But I think it's maybe a wee bit early. I, I don't know how many teams is in that league or yeah. or I know that the definitely they had played. started. They had started, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they definitely have. But for us, with with doing the split, you know, it, it gives us a bit of time. I, I was actually against the split just because. I didn't think it reflected a fair, a fair league. You know what I mean. You yeah. mean you could be in, you could be in a really tough group of six. Everyone could beat each other. There could be one or two points between top and bottom in that group. Yeah. And the team that's bottom could end up facing relegation. You know, and under normal normal circumstances, they may have finished third or fourth. You know, with the the points difference. Yeah. I just didn't think it was fair, but. Listen, no decision was easy. I understand why they've done it, but you know, with, with it being the split, we do have time, as you say. You know, we could start at the end of January, come April, you, you could bang out three games a week, you know. Yeah. So, you know, there is time, but I can't see as there has to be another lockdown in January. I don't see them really, you know, relaxing what they're doing and then not hitting as hard after, you know. Yeah. See, when the split come out, uh, of course, if anybody doesn't know, Ford and Fennec are the same league, 2A. Um, when it first came out, we were in the same section. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Look, looking forward to it. And then, and then no. it changed. And it, we, we're, now in a, we're now in a five team section now. Yeah. Um, and on paper, it looks really tough. I think with some, some divisions, there is sometimes more of a disparity between the top and the bottom teams. Yeah. Yeah. I, one thing about our league, I don't, I don't think you get that. It's yeah, it's two A's. Two A is one of the toughest leagues in amateur league football, and, and anybody who's ever played it will tell you that because yeah. there's it's so competitive from top straight down until about eighth or ninth every year. Uh, yeah. And it, it, even our last lot of games with each other, um, I said to you and Twitter, I was I was looking forward to him because. I think there've been five gold thrillers the last four or five yeah. teams have played three, each other. Three twos, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. And it's went either way, either time. Yeah. And it's always been that way since Finnick gave come in to a with Ford like and yeah. Uh actually 
been a long time since I spoke to you because with last year we played each other October and November 2019 and then they get to play each other the second time and then it'll be almost like three years since we've played each other by the yeah. time we get around if, if we're both still on TA next year That's like it'll be, That's so it, it is it is really strange I'm just glad because I know the players worked hard to get some sort of competitive football on the go well, that's it. Sure, you know, your boys are as well, like you know, the boys are the boys are busting, and you know, we've had a, a lot of young young guys from the area, from the estate, uh, yeah. who are all friends outside of football. You know, so you know what young people are like at the minute. You know, you're never going to stop them socialising with each other. You know, yeah. and then so they're they're running about with each other outside of football, and then we'll come to football and you're telling them, listen. You need to try and keep your distance. We need to be seen to be doing the right thing, you know. You know, and I'm sure they're looking at us going, you know, what's it all about? You know, I think I think it's very tough in that generation. I know the mental health thing's a big thing, but you know, the likes of ourselves, we have families. You know, you know, where where the kids that say I don't know, seventeen to twenty one or twenty two, they're in their own wee social bubble. They're always running about the gallery. Then all of a sudden, it's been taken away from them. You know. Yeah. It must be tough at that age too. Yeah. You know, like, but yeah, we're all paying for competitive football, but at the minute it's very hard to work towards it. There's just there's no end in sight, you know. It's been something we've touched on previously in previous podcasts with the mental health thing and, and you said about it there. It's it's something as coaches, especially that every year goes by, you have to become more and more conscious with it because yeah. And then this year, it's it's been tough on a lot of people. And within your club, or the, your club, you want to create a community. And within yeah. that community, you just want to make sure people are protected and they feel safe. And you're having to do different things. Like, you're having to organize different things just to try and sort of stay within the rooms, but also make sure people are getting out of the house, getting yeah. communicating in some way with their friends, safely, of course. And it's not a, it's, it becomes a side from football almost, doesn't it? Yeah, it's too, you know, it's it's moved on from what you started out, you know, and started pre season. You know, it's a totally different environment now, you know what I mean? And it, it is, it is hard. It's, it's, and not only, yeah, getting out of the house, keeping them fit, but trying to put sessions on that they're enjoying, you know, yeah. where we are worried about. Like that, there the, the non-contact one, or not training me out of football. You know, people could lose interest really, really quickly if that yeah. went on. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, they're out to play football. Yeah. You know, we're not to try a running club. You know, running club. Running, a running club. You know, it's yeah. although some of our boys may say it is sometimes, but <laughs> uh, no. But you know, it's as you say, it's just it's just totally different. That's the last load of months. Uh, how have you found it yourself? Obviously. You're just just turned thirty not long ago, so last week. Um, <laughs> so how are you finding it yourself keeping fit? Because it's not your normal type of season. It has been stop start. Have you been doing much individually or personally in the house? Yeah, well, certainly at the start, uh, that I was off. I was lucky enough work wise. There's there's three of us uh, that that work together, uh, and we worked it that one of us would be on call all the time while the other two were on furlough. Yeah. And we took it in turns. So the first four weeks that I was off, we would have went out the back or, or went for a run or, or done stuff like that. Then I went back to work, which our work's pretty physical. So that, that, that keeps you fit too, yeah. you know. Then I went through a wee phase, you know, the middle of summer, the days were good. You were out the back playing with kids. Maybe didn't do anything for a while, apart from, you know, what we did, did with the football team, yeah. you know, at the minute. Uh, I'm in isolation, as I told you earlier on. We had a family member, four of them actually tested positive, and, and I was up uh, doing a bit of work in their house last week. So I've dug the old weights out of the shed and, and the skipping rope and stuff and, and, and doing a wee bit like that, you know. But and it, it is hard by yourself. Yeah, it is definitely. hard by yourself. Because we, we brought up the team environment. You feel like training is just in the team environment and yeah. having to do it individually, it's, it's really tough, especially when you're not used to it at all. You know, well, I would always keep myself picking over, you know, if you're training two nights a week with, with a team, I would always done something by myself, be it just a, a 5K. I was never never really a gym goer, you know, or yeah. or doing anything like that, but I, I did enjoy getting out in the road and, and doing doing running. The problem is now, it's, it's, it's hard, you know. I done a couple of weeks ago, maybe done three or four in the one week, 
yeah. and it was just far too much. Yeah. You know, so I'm trying to keep it. If I can do a wee bit around the house and maybe one the week, you know, the road running's hard on the joints, especially when you're just turned thirty. <laughs> Uh, mate, what I want to do is I want to I want to get into obviously we know about your uh, current uh, situation yeah. in Finnegan. You're playing away at Finnegan and coaching as well. Um, where, where did it all start for you? Where did you start your youth football? Youth football was Lisburn Youth, right? So it was. So I think I went there when I was about eight or nine. You know, that, my dad he he was involved with Lisburn Youth through the eighties, so it was just sort of the, the natural the natural progression. If you're like you know, how many times have you seen it? You know, dads at, at football clubs and, and the sons follow, or well, sometimes it goes vice versa. The son could go and the dad could end up there, but yeah. you know, he was involved there through the 80s, so played there right up to under 16 level. And brilliant, brilliant experiences at Lisbon East. Like back then, like it was, a, it was a serious club, you know, at East level. You know, uh, we had a, a very, very good side growing up, uh, lots of. Lots of good players we were really strong, especially early on, you know, under 10s, under 11s, right up to about under 14s, under 15s. And then there would have been a couple of clubs for the last two years that, that come in and, and really competed with, with us, you know. Yeah. You always had good clubs in and around, you know, the likes of Snabbers and Dungoyne, although Celtic boys, but they would have been more in the... I forget the name of it now. Would have been in the Belfast League or Down, down and Connor would have been called whatever, back then. Yeah. You know, uh, we would have been in in the Lisburn League, obviously up through the years. You, your Hillsborough boys and and stuff like that. There, Lurgan Towns, teams like that would have competed yeah. with us. But we were we were fortunate. We had a, a very very good side right the way through up. Actually, when I got the under fourteen or fifteen, it was a couple of teams joined. It was like Shankill Juniors or something. You know, we come in and, and they really, I think we played them the first day of season. It was our first time in the league and we had dominated for years. And you had the likes of Younger, who is involved with Albert Foundry, Bill Maxwell, JC yeah. Hill, the McGough Road. They came in and, and we got our eyes open. I think they, they beat us 4 5 1 the first day of season. You know, yeah. so we had a good couple of years competing against them, but it's probably what we needed to, you know what I mean? Yeah. The rest of the other teams, the Andrews of the God, you would only play it against them. There was a tournament, I don't know if you remember, Guy at Molusk. Champions of Champions. champions. Uh, yes, loved it. Everyone was, at Molusk. The Lisbon League teams never competed in the Northern Ireland Cup, didn't they not normally? I'm not sure. I don't remember them. I, I, I always remember my age group, Lisbon Youth, uh, and all never would have played the, in the Northern Ireland Cup. And the only opportunity you got to play them was the Champions of Champions, champions which champions. you loved every year up at Molusk. Oh, was class. That was brilliant because you did come up against teams like as you say, the likes of Celtic boys, they, you know, at our level, they had uh, Connor Hagen in their team, Kieran yeah. O'Connor, I think would have been yeah. in that team too. But that was the only time you got to play, to play them side. We were lucky enough, that, I don't know, we're going back a great bit, but I think we definitely won it twice, if not three times. You know, we had a real, and that was a fantastic day. You know, we were there yeah. early in the morning and, uh, you know, Spent, you were you were there. It was late evening, you know. By the time you got ready, if you were lucky enough to to push on, but that was it was brilliant. Yeah, I, I think I only played in the champions and champions once, but uh, it was something that as a kid, when you especially when you were in, in school and you had kids playing for different teams, and if it was different leagues, they never met each other, and and then all of a sudden it was champions and champions. Just when you got to play against people, yeah. you never would have got to play against. It was it was a great competition. It really was. Me, me, that was one thing about about youth football, made lots of friends, which is carried yeah. on in the amateur league. And, and that's the one thing I love about about sport or especially about football. The friends that I made in football over the years is is phenomenal, you know, right through up to now, you know, and yeah. And as you say, you played against teams you would never come up against, made friends and and carried on from there, you know. Well Lisburn Youth was that similar to probably my age group where it was under sixteen and then finished and that was it. Under sixteen and that was it. What so, was the options then for you, young player? I always found it, it was very hard because if the team you're involved in didn't have a senior setup, for example, yeah. then yeah. it was you were just left to go to your own devices and find a club. And you're still a boy, really. Like you were 16, 17. Yeah, and well, tough going in the men's game at that stage. Oh, uh, uh, it was a few years before I got the men's game. Near the end, under 16s had a few opportunities, which was great. You know, as I said, surrounded by. Brilliant, brilliant players at Lisbon Youth and our team. You know, we had 
three or four with Alan Manis and Nats, Paul McDonald. I don't know yeah. where you know McDuck. McDuck, yeah, no McDuck, yeah. Well, yeah. McDuck Good was player. Team with a guy up front, uh, Simon Parkinson, Sparky. Sparky's at Man United from he was 13 or 14, right up through. He ended up signing up for Coventry. Right. You know, we had, we had Brian Burns, who's involved at, at Lisbon Rangers now. Burns, he was in our team. We had a real quality say. So there was always people coming to watch. So I got a couple of opportunities. Number 16 went to Blackburn for a couple of weeks. And then as I was leaving Lisburn Youth, at under 16 went to Leighton Orient. So went over there for, I think it was like three or four weeks, where Darren McKay, who is now in Wartown manager. Yeah. Darren was signed for, for Leighton Orient with another guy, Philip May. So I actually moved in with them. They were living with a family in a, it was a place called Buckhurst Hill in, at, in Leighton Orient. Right. So once we finished the Lisbon Youth, went over there, as I say, for three or four weeks. Found it tough at the start, but as, as the weeks went on, found my feet and done well. There was actually talk at one stage of them sounding out another family about me moving in, you know, but it didn't work out in the end, yeah. you know. So came home and had a couple of options. Uh, the Glens youth team, which would have had a good side. I think the likes of Jason Hill and, and Bill Maxwell that I talked about earlier, they went there. But I ended up signing for the Blues youth team, you know, and stayed there for, I think it was three full seasons. So that would have took me up yeah. until about 18 or 19, you know. And uh, what? Again, again, lucky there at the Blues because the side we had in Linfield was, was crazy. Yeah, I was going to say, the Blues always have strong sides, especially under 17, 18, 19, and they just have much success with trophies as well there. Yeah, yeah, as I say, it's, I've been lucky, really, really lucky, team, because being surrounded by, by very good players, you know, and and that was a, a great stepping stone from Lisburn Youth to, to Linfield, because, you know, Lisburn Youth was run professionally, you were going to arguably the biggest club in, in, in Ireland, you know, and yeah. and uh, the team we had was, it was crazy. We think we won... Won the league, won two Harry Cavan Youth Cups, won the League Cup. Uh, actually was lucky enough to play a few games for Swifts in the second year, who won the league. Players like Mark McGill and stuff were, were involved in that team. And uh, in our youth team, the likes of Andy Hunter, Al Manis again, he yeah. was keeper. McDuck was there, uh, Connor Laurie. You know, real, real good guys and and real good, good players. Good supporters, you know? yeah. And Lee Ice, who's involved with Sirocco now, Lee was part of part of that team as well. But with a with a brilliant, brilliant time, it was it was a really good. The first two years were super, you know, and played lots. As I say, it was a guy who's involved with Green Island, Gilsey. Yeah. So it was Andy McMoran was the manager, and Gilsey was involved with the team on up the Athletic and the Swifts. So me and Gelsey had it had it off, you know, and Gelsey would have had me involved in the second year up with the Athletic and up with the Swifts, you know, and still keeping contact with Gelsey now. He was he was really really good for me back then. Yeah. The third year didn't play as much. Would have would have been always in the squad, but probably wasn't a regular player in in the, in the third year, you know. Uh, did I apply myself properly? Maybe not. You were getting to that age where you were maybe going out on a Thursday night and out on a Saturday and probably doing things you shouldn't have been doing. But uh, at the end of third year, then I got released. I wasn't being kept on. So that was the, the end of that chapter. But brilliant times and, yeah. and medals to show for it, you know, which is great. I think you're being a wee bit modest as well. But made you said that you were lucky you played in good teams. But um, good, only good players playing good teams, really. Oh, so yeah, but you, you know you're only as good as the people around you. You know what I mean, too. You know, and yeah. you, you need a bit. Of, like I have been, been fortunate that I've never really struggled in a team, yeah. and that's that's the truth. You know, I've always been lucky enough to to be in good sides. You know, when you left the Blues, then was there was the option there to stay around that level Irish League, or were you thinking uh, I'm going to drop down a wee bit here? play a bit more regularly? It's hard to, I don't really think so, guy. I don't, don't really recall anyone batting the door down, like, you know what I mean? Or, I don't even know if I had the interest, you know, yeah. to be honest. Uh, I, 
I was there was Andy McMoran, who was manager of the Blues. Actually, I think Andy had problems with the heart, and he stepped down. So the last sort of year it was a guy called Brian Brothers, I think, who took the team. You know, and uh, he was a nice guy, nice guy, but just maybe didn't fit into, into his plans as much for going going for Brian was successful too. You know, even yeah. in that in that last year we won the. Forget what the years were. It was back to back. We won the Harry Cavan Youth Cup, but I think it was the last year I didn't really play as much. I was in, I was in the in the, the squad for the final, but I don't believe I played. And I remember having a, a conversation with Brian, and he just said, he said, "Look, I think you'd be better if if you moved on, you know." So, believe it or not, I went to the Finnegan just for pre season. Right. So just uh, I had family there. You know what I mean? There's always been a link with fin- Finnegan. Uh, so I went and done pre-season, played a couple of games, and then we played the Murray Rack at the Murray Rack up at Icy Park one night and played played really well. Uh, I think I scored. And after the game, the Rack got in contact then. Yeah. So that's that's how that, that came about. And him and Ha didn't know what to do and I ended up going up the up the train with the Murray and, and really enjoyed it and, and sang for them then. So so it was only about 19, maybe, 18, 19. Yeah. At that stage, what were we, Demurray Rack, were 1A, 1B, or Premier? No, the Rack were Premier, right? Yeah. I think the year before, might have been, I don't know if it was the year before or the previous year, they had just won the Stevensons. So right. there, there were, Strong they, side. They were a big outfit, you know, and, yeah. and you know, the, the facility showed itself. And the people that we first showed itself, you know, there was there was a lot of senior players, you know, that wouldn't have had too many young players. Uh, there at that time, a lot of senior players, you know, and, and very, very good senior players, and they were very strong, you know. So it was a it was a good environment to go into, and a lot of older guys helped me out, you know. Yeah, because young player coming in, sometimes you can be Bit intimidating coming in, all these senior boys. But as you said, it was a good dressing room, very helpful for young players. Probably yeah. glad to see some young boys coming in to do the running for them. Well, that, that was it. Yeah. It was actually it was it was quite funny. The pre-season game, uh, there was a guy, Harry Davis, who I'm still friends with now. He runs Next Level Sports. Yeah. And Ian Roberts, who's manager of the Murray Young Men at the minute. So, and during the pre-season game. I can't remember exactly how it happened, but I'll say I'll, I'll, I'll say a nutmeg Terry or something. And being a cocky eighteen year old, I had a chuckle. So little <laughs> did I know, stepping into men's football, that's not the right thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the next time I got the ball, Harry, straight through, <laughs> five feet in the air, and then Ian Roberts sort of run past me and and said, you know, that's what you get for. We're fucking about basically, you know. So, <laughs> but I had words with them, and then after the game, they were fine. And and when I went up to the rack, they, they were, you know, two really good guys who I got on yeah. with the whole time was there, and still do now, you know. But it just shows you, you know, you're you're coming in that man's environment, and <laughs> and you soon, I, you soon you learn need to realize, you know, uh, at the at the rack, did you have much success with your team? Did you, was there any the first trophies time or? Round, First time round, we would always, always been a good Premiership side, you know. And yeah. for for being young, I played a lot of games, so I did, you know. Uh, but it, we didn't win anything the first time I was there. But we were always, you know, we always competed. We were always, you know, the top half of the Premier section, which, which is no easy feat, you know. Yeah. Lawrence Lawrence Patterson was a manager at at that time. Uh, Lawrence was real, really nice guy, you know, and to be fair, I look back now, and being so young, played played lots of games, you know, there was times you were left out, obviously, you know, depending yeah. on what it was, but, you know, with a good, a good side there, Ivor Moore, fellow Ivor Moore, who's, who's still in fault with the Murray, yeah. Ivor would have took me under his wing a wee bit, you know, Ivor, I think Ivor was 38 or 39 when I went, and he was, he was phenomenal still, you know, he... I still say that at this day he's one of the best players that, that I ever played with. You know what I mean? Yeah. And really, real, really, really good footballer. You know, and there was plenty of stick, and you know, the you got the the back rock dirty, but you learned a lot. You know, you had to be thick skinned, and and 
that's what made it too, the banter and the crack, you know. Yeah, it's kind of the glory days amateur league football in terms of like our lifetime where everybody trained twice a week, everybody bust their balls on a Saturday and then after the game we're going out for a paint together. Yeah, well, and then just started again the next week. Or it's, that's, that's, it's you know. a wee bit different. We spoke about it before, but a wee bit different. The, the, these days where um, the younger ones don't do it as much um, yeah, and, and well, probably don't train as hard either. But uh, back in those days, you were going into a winning environment, no matter what team you went to. Yeah, and you couldn't. You couldn't be, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, you know, there is issues at the minute, but you couldn't be sensitive. You know, you've, yeah. you, you took a falcon on the chin, you know what I mean? And you couldn't. You know, sometimes you feel now you have to be careful what you say, or you, big have time, to, yeah. you have to conduct yourself. You know, if if I don't something wrong on a Saturday or on a Saturday, but the Maeve or Moore or whoever, you, you they let you know. You know, the the they weren't behind the door. Yeah. You know, and going into that environment so young, you had to learn quickly. But you know, that's what it was about. Yeah, that was it. There was football back then. You just got on with. So you yeah, did. yeah. And as soon as you walked off that pitch. You know, no matter what did anyone said to you, where it was right or wrong, you know, it was forgotten about. And as you say, you went into the into the bar and you, you had a beer and you took a bit of abuse and a bit of stick about it and you went home and I'm come the Tuesday night, you were back at it, you know. Uh, how long were you at the Murray Rack first time round? So this is the hard life sickness last night. Uh, would have been three three or four seasons, guys. Okay. So it would have been through it's hard to find terrible with dates, you know what I mean? It, it was a, it was a, it was a, a couple a few seasons anyway. Yeah. So it was, and, and thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed it, and then decided to move on. Uh, looking back now, I don't. I regret it a wee bit. I probably should have should have stayed, you know. But I, there was a wee bit of a restructure in the Irish league, so I think it was the went to the. It was from the B division. They went to the one and two, yeah. And and Crew United had got accepted into it, yeah. So I knew a couple of guys at Crew, and I don't know why I wasn't happy at the rack. Really, I can't remember what it was, or maybe it was just the opportunity. Maybe you were thinking you were going to play, you know, in, league, the, yeah. in the Irish League, and you know. So I went up and done pre-season with them. Pre-season went okay, uh, and then. Play, play there again. Really good guy. So when I say I hadn't struggled, this this would have been the only team that that was probably a bad experience for me. You know, that it just it was probably too soon for them. To be yeah. honest, that the step up there was we had good players, but none of us were probably quite at the level of the rest of the of the Division Two teams. You know, and they struggled yeah. and chopped and changed the manager. The manager was there at the start, only lasted a couple of weeks, then they brought someone else in, and then they brought someone else in. He only stayed for two or three weeks. It was a, it was a bit of a disaster on the pitch for them, you know, or, you know, but again, the really good guys at the club, you know, and people that I had played with uh, previously through at Linfield and Lisburn Youth were there. The guy, Nicky May, who's a, Nicky's doing brilliant for himself. Nicky's a coach at Loch Gall now. Yeah. Uh, Nicky was there. His brother, Robbie. Connor Laurie, again, who, who he had played with at Linfield. So there was there was, there was was good players there, but it just, it was never settled from, yeah. the, from the word go and quickly lost interest, to be honest. You know, it just, it was, I was only there three or four months and, you know, it was a, enjoyed the people that were there enjoyed, but on the pets, it, it just it, it was Tough. too soon for a lot of people, you know. It, it, it does, included, you know, uh, including yeah. yourself and that, you know, I was part of the, the team on the pets, you know. At that stage, M, was the were your thoughts in go back into Murray Rack or, or look elsewhere and see what's out there? Well, Barry, Barry Taylor had, had taken over at the Murray Rack, and Barry, when he heard that I wasn't enjoying it at Crew, he was on the phone. Uh, and saying that, you know, he wanted me to come back or was more than welcome to come back. But I'd, I'd lost interest a wee bit or it just it went a wee bit flat, you know, after that yeah. experience. So I decided just to go to Finnegan, go back to Finnegan. You had cousins playing there and, and relatives involved in the club. So I just wanted to get back on the pitch, start enjoying myself. So I think it was 
it would have been the it was later on in the year that it, that it went back to Finnegan. Um, yeah. They already had a good say there, so they did, and and had started the season really well. Uh, and within a couple of weeks of, of being back, you know, it, it found found the appetite again, and 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 that desire to, to play in in a good side. You yeah. know, they were in two B at the time, and with a really really good season. Uh, under, I'm still friends with him now. It was a, a Graham Bradshaw was a manager and another friend, Roy Press. Yeah. Uh, and it was a good mix of young players and experienced players. Uh, and we had a great season. We lost out on the league on the last day of the season. And it was at the time when Ralph Fern had come in into the amateur league. And I think they had went up from 2C into mm-hmm. 2B. And they actually went on to win the league. Yeah. So we play, played at the Valley the last game of the season. Forget the team we were playing. It was like Fourth Newton Abbey or something. And... Uh, Ralph Verne were playing on the pitch beside us. So uh, there was big crowds up watching, you know, we had a good lineup and and obviously Ralph Verne had a good la- lineup. Uh Ralph Verne had a good side too, the guy like Hedger, I don't know if you remember Hedger. Yeah, yeah, I know Hedger well, yeah. Good they player. Good we we went at it head head all year. I think they beat us beat us at home. And then we went up to the diamond at Rath Cool one it was when the midweek fixture started. And it was yeah. an absolute ding dong of a game. You know, both teams trying to play, but it was physical as well. And we ended up beating them three two at the diamond that night. And that sort of put us, you know, right in the mix. We only a few games to go. Uh, we needed them to drop points in the last day, and we needed to win. So I think we beat that Newton Abbey team four five one, and uh, Ralph Fern went on to win three two. So it was a <laughs> but, uh, I actually scored that day. One of the things I regret, I thought my dad was going to lynch me. I actually scored that day and f- took my top off because we were, you know, it was the last day of the season. I think they were drawn at the time. Yeah. And I ran over and celebrated on the other the other line in front of the Raph Fern guys. <laughs> Which didn't go down well. It was a bit of shaking getting on. But after the match, walking off a few of their guys, it, that had been playing against us, they come up and you know it was a bit of banter. No one, no yeah. one took that seriously, but the uh, could have spiraled out the wrong way, really. Yeah, the Rafa came straight up in the two A league after and competed with us for the two A league two years in a row. Yeah, um, so they did. They were they were really strong side then. The first, I think it was the first year to come up. We beat them. We beat them to the league by winning on the last game of the season. Right. We won our, the four team back in. We we played Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday for four weeks straight. Won nine games in a bounce, and during yeah. that nine game period, Rafferty didn't have any games. There's just no. one game left, one game left, and they, they needed watching. They needed to win it, but the thought they were that far ahead, it was done. Like they needed to win their last game to, to make sure that they would finish above us on points, and they drew, and we had one game left. And we went and beat Newton Breda of three 0 and won the league. But the year after, I think it was the year after that, uh, or it was maybe a couple of years down the line. Um, we just had to draw with Shanker United last game of the season. With the with the play Rafa and Rangers away and Shanker United at home in our last right. two games, I remember correctly. And we just had to avoid defeat against Rafa and the league was won. And they beat us 3 1. And then they come up to watch us playing Shanker United. And we beat Shanker United. We won the Cockburn and Corey. Right. Um, and when we won the Cockburn and Corey, then the, the Shanker United, it was against Shanker United. So they had the onus. To go and beat us out of the league, they beat, they beat us three two. Um, when we were home, so from us going up and watching Ralph Fern and celebrating when they drew that game uh-huh. a couple of years before, and then it was tables turned and they're turned. celebrating in the same game after winning the league say, against you. Guy, <clears throat> I fought at a crack and say back in a really really strong say. Um, like we got the couple of junior cup semi finals, junior shield, one two eight twice over a four year period. I think I think it was a, a two year. Maybe a one or two year difference between it, uh, Cockburn and Corey, but but that was a, that was a really strong two A junior football in general was really strong in yeah. because you had the likes of Dariaki, you had Shankly United, you had Ralph Fern, um, a couple of years later Crum and Star didn't come on up, but there was that many good teams in the league, yeah, and it happened to be the team that was winning the league every year didn't have a pitch, so nobody was really getting promoted. Damn, no one was going anywhere. So. 
the teams the teams got enough uh, of this and then get on at the league and get on at the league and that's when one seed was created. Yeah. So one yeah. seed was created. I was there at when that happened. Yeah, and we, uh, one, when one seed got created, then we got bypassed and everybody else went up and we stayed. <laughs> so it did, um, mm. as it happens. Like, but um, I remember Finnegy, Finnegy come up in the two A, but did the, the last did his last long in two A because if I remember yeah. correctly, he's come up as a really strong say, but. The two A was, was a really strong league again as well. That was the thing. It, it was actually one I look back on now uh, and sort of say, Flip, what if would it, at the end of that season, I, I'd sort of say to, them, to, to Graham and Roy, I would come yeah. back and just stay till the end of the season. Yeah. You know, that was my plan. Uh, and come the end of that season, there was actually, off the top of my head, there was four... Five, six, about six or seven players that that finished runner up in two B all went different ways. You know, I think there was four of us went to the Murray Rack, back to the Murray Rack. There was two, the two cousins, David and Stephen, the twins that would play for Finney for years. They yeah. went to Ivy McGee. Uh, yeah. so the, the nucleus of that that really good team, you know, went different directions. And it's always one I sort of think, or you know, we're talking about. What if, you know, for the stay yeah. together how we were got on, you know, but you know, it was decisions made and and and, and people went their separate ways, you know. Yeah. So go, going back then to the rack, um obviously a club you knew about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You were enjoyed your time there. So going back there then you're a strong say then I take it still going back that, to going to the back. Club, yeah. yeah, and that was that was a, a good again, a, a good three or four seasons. You know, uh, really, really strong side, and we, we competed. Won the border cup. Uh, well, that side, I think it was two thousand and two thousand six or something sticks out in my head. I'm terrible with dates. Yeah. You know, you ever, it's one of them ones you remember, but you can't really. You know, you remember being yeah. there, but <laughs> dates wise, it's 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 up in the air. Uh, competed for the the we missed out on winning the league, the Premier Division, on the last day of season. Uh, Kelly Lea was at the time. Kelly Lea, I think, had won like six or seven league titles in a row. Yeah. You know, they were a real force. But there was a couple of seasons we had went head to head with them. Kelly Lea were away to Adam McGee from the last game of the season. We were away to Lauren Tech. We needed them to, I can't remember where we needed them to get beat. I think it was a draw done them. Uh, and we had the win. So we went down to Lauren Tech and I think we won uh, 4 0. Yeah. And Ian McGee were beating Kelly Lay up until like the ninety something minute, and Kelly Lay equalised. Or uh, they might even went on to get a winner, but the, the, they'd done enough, you know, to pip us on the on the last day of season. But then a few years, that was that was a really good side. Barry Taylor and Ivor Moore were manager managers yeah. or coaches. So and the, the likes of you know Anto Walsh, uh, you you know Anto guy, no? Do you know of Anto? I, I don't know Anto, no, but I know all of him. I know he's a good player. I've seen him oh, play. But Liam yeah. Burns played at that time as well for the Burns, Burns, yeah, Burns he was deaf back doing his wee yeah. doing his wee trick that he does. <laughs> you ever seen that wee trick? It was brilliant. Right. <laughs> and he knew it was coming, but he just he just yeah. the path. Burns he was was left back. Uh, a friend of mine here came from from Finney. He was in that Jim Hornet, who actually played for Ford when he was younger. Believe it or not. Right, right, okay. Uh, you had Gareth Finlay, centre half, uh, you know, as I say, Burnsy, Anto Walsh, Bob Lennon, Gary Hewitt, a guy, yeah. uh, you know, uh, Spud, Neil Campbell, who was there the first time that I was there too. Neil, Spud was a good player playing in the Irish League too. Although, you know, Spud was a, a wee bit older, but he was still quality when he played, yeah. you know. Uh, Neil Larmer, you had, you had a couple of a younger ones coming through there as well. You know, Barry Bloomer was was involved in, in the squad. Yeah. At, at one time, you know, but it was it was a good few years, and and there was we we're lucky not to have more success with that team. So we were, you know, it's just kind of well, you couldn't really you had a Kelly Lay team which was dominant. You were unlucky with that. But then yeah. I was going to say then but there was uh, other. You, you knew he didn't come up that. after and then they dominated. Yeah. Found you were a strong side. Yeah, you had a lot of strong sides in the Premier League. But found you, well, again, people that I knew from when, from when I was younger, Stephen Young, younger, Bill Maxwell, uh, Chizzy played in the Foundry sides 
yeah. at that time too. You know, they were strong. There was there were so many strong sides. It's hard to it's hard to remember back exactly who you who you competed against, but we were we were there there about for for a few years. You know, at that time, then uh, you were back at the my Iraq. Um, spent a few seasons again with him. Then was there an option to go elsewhere or? Uh, Barry Barry and Aver took. They stepped down from the Royal Iraq and they took the the Dariaki job. So it was a, sort of the time Dariaki had done a lot of work and uh, we're, we're really making strides. You know, they've got the ground and, and all in order. And Barry and Ivor decided to take that job. And I didn't go with them. I decided to, to stay at the rack, you know. And there was a guy called David Johnson come in uh, with another fellow called Ricky Graham, you know, and it just, it didn't work, didn't work for me, you know, I stay, I did stay for the season, uh, but it, it, it enjoyed the place, enjoyed the people, but yeah. didn't really enjoy my time on the pitch, you know, and I don't think, you know, I was never one for running about tipping people, you know, I like to play and, and get up and down, but, you know, it just, it didn't fit in. With, the, with David's plans and, and Ricky's plans, you know. So yeah. it was a season probably spent in and out, to be honest, at the time. Yeah. You know? Then and at the, that and, stage, you, and that, the, that stage in Dariak, he was the option there. Well, that, I got the, we got to the final of Clarence Cup, believe it or not, with yeah. with that. That's what I'm saying. He, he inherited a very good team, yeah. you know, David. And, and to be fair, he brought in, a, you know, a couple of cracking players, uh, Stevie Green, who, who plays at Banbridge, big Ricky Rollerford. Yeah. Come in. Uh, he was part of that side. Uh, big truck. Guy Trier. He guy was guy was well in his thirties, you know. But come in, played centre half, and and uh, it was a, it was a, it was a, still a strong side, you know. But for whatever reason, it just didn't work out. David Johnson didn't fancy me. I didn't particularly, you know. Not saying I didn't like him as a fella, but it didn't. It just wasn't my cup of tea, you know, as a manager. Yeah. Or, so it was. It was only ever going to end one way, you know. Unfortunately, that happens in football as well. Yeah, not everybody's yeah. got to, not everybody's going to get on or have the same opinions in football, and everything's different. And there wasn't even the case of not getting on. You know, I would never, I'm not really one for falling out with people, or you know, but uh, it just for whatever reason, I didn't. You know, like him as a manager, he probably didn't like me as a player, and 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 that's the way it was. You know. Yeah, so at the end of that season, then was that when you then moved to Taraki, yeah? Yeah, took, took left, left Iraq, uh, took obviously a, a bit of time away, obviously with pre season, and then Barry and Aver had moved, they stayed a season at Taraki, and then Michael came in, you yeah. know, and uh, Michael called down to the house one night, told me what he wanted to do, you know, I think he's here for about 10 minutes and, and I've signed and all, you know. Uh, really sold it to me, you know, Yeah. what I wanted and started pre-season with them and, you know, it was it was a fantastic few years, you know, we were under makeup. It, the thing with Derek, it was the time we said earlier that they're a good project and the are on the up as well, so. Brilliant, you know. Did you start with Derek in 1C, was it, or? No, 2A. 2A, yeah. Sorry, guy. Uh, 2A, yeah. yeah, because I remember playing against Ford. I think Ford were playing out a they played at a grass pitch. Was it the back of Twinbrook or it was at the Leisure Centre, was it? Yeah, we had a pitch at Twinbrook at that stage. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember playing there and playing against. I don't know if you'd have been playing or not. You know. No, geez, I didn't play. I was just a supporter in the sideline. Well, <laughs> so, did you not play at all? I, well, I had a bad knee injury. I was 16. So right. my, my, my dad's vice chairman of Ford. And at right. the time, back then, he would have been, if it was Liam Burns managing, he would have been assistant manager. Right. Uh, the Liam Burns or. He, he brought Liam in as like a joint manager and then took a back step and let Liam work away and then uh, Vicky Wilson was manager for a year and then John McGrath came in and my daddy assisted John as yeah, manager. I remember so John. I remember John. Yeah. yeah. So I would I would have went to a lot of games. I played in the mornings and then well, by that stage I probably wouldn't even been playing. I think it was about 18, 19 myself. So um yeah, I would have went and watched a lot of games as always a Ford man. So right. uh but I remember, I remember, I remember Dyak. Yeah, Dyak was a strong side, really strong side. Well, that was that was our first. That was two years we were at uh, when I when I joined, and because I remember going up to 
Big Daddy was the means playing Big Daddy yep. Brown. What a what a player he was, Great you know. Player. Oh, that me, you know. And I actually were drinking out of the King's Head as it was then, which is now doing the guy I drunk in the King's Head. You know, that's where Finnegan always drunk out of. And yeah, even when I didn't play for Finnegan, you know, Stop we'd have met up with the friends that, that were there. And Big Daddy would have drunk in the King's Head too. You know, yeah. so it was funny. There was a relationship on the pitch and then which carried on, you know, outside of, outside of football. But what a gentleman too, as well as a good player. Right? This was back then as well. We um we would have had Dak O'Connor playing up front for us. Right. As well during that period, yeah, Dak O'Connor played a couple of years for us. Um, and hey, Jackie, that was it. That's Jamar right. Village, yeah, Jamar Village, big, yeah. yeah. We had his crack and say that, and we were lucky, very lucky to have Dackie because Dackie came to us from Crumlin and he was still yeah. good enough to play at primary division. He, he played, was lethal, wasn't he? Yeah, he played a long time at Ford, and then big Frankie Sewell playing at the back with him, uh, with, with Dackie up front, with a lot of hard workers in the team as well, mm-hmm. and good guys out there like Stevie Smith, Shawnee Merlin. We, we had a way to crack and Ford say back then, okay. and it was it was the opportunity then to go intermediate football, and we missed the boat almost, so it did. And, yeah. The, the, the pit situation always holds you back, really. Um, you know, we're in the same situation at the minute. You know, the clubs are very similar, and the, you know. And I find that as well. Our clubs were both teams are competitive in two A every year. Probably about two or three players short most seasons of of going above that to get and challenge for the league. But uh, it's the pitch that holds you back, and it's the hardest thing as well when you're you're trying to sign players to have that pitch. Which is why we were so fortunate back in those days to even have the players we did, yeah. because we didn't have the pitch to get promoted as well. Yeah. At Ford. And it's, I don't know, I've been my eyes open the last few years. It's, it's so hard to build. You can't have at our level, or I believe you can't have eighteen, a squad of eighteen because of yeah. pure quality. Because you just can't keep everyone happy, you know. So yeah. I think you you run the risk. You, you run off a. A squad of maybe 15 or 16 or 14 or 15 maybe you know and you have a couple of real good guys that, are, that don't like to say floaters but they're very very good second team players who can step up and and, and, and and come in and help out but so hard to keep a big you can't keep a big squad at all now. big team and then it, it like we said earlier about the generation of players as well you would have had a squad when when i was younger growing up around football you would have had a squad of 18 19 and everyone bust their balls every week to get in that squad at a 14 come a Saturday. Yeah. Whereas nowadays players will just go, nah. And they, and most of the time they expect everything without doing anything. So it's train once, why am I not playing? Didn't train that week, why am I not playing? Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's a completely different thing. It, it is hard as a coach, but um, like you said, the squad of 18 19 or it started last season where you had a lot of players injured, a lot of players missing. Yeah, that's right. Uh, he's, had a real, he's had a real tough start. Well, we lost first five games this season. I, it, it was until, until he's played us, whatever. Was that the first game we won, that was, was it? Yeah. First, first, he's worked, yeah. He's but, away first, he's us away first 3-0 up or something at half time. To be honest, I think it was the first time we'd had nearly a full strength side all season as well. Mm-hmm. And then we went to get, we, we went actually in a run of 10 games unbeaten. Which yeah. Go, yeah. goes to show what missing five or six can do to you, like, or junior football in general. So it can. Yeah. Uh, how long did you stay at Dariaki at that stage? Just moved uh, up in 1C and then just progressed through the leagues? Yeah, so it was 2A, 1C, 1B, 1A. And then I left. Uh, I started the season, the next season. Yeah. Uh, and then that's when I went back to Funny. But like the time at Dariaki was, it was, it was brilliant. It was, it was what I needed at the time. It was sort of in, my peak years, if you like. Stevie Farr always used to say to me, you know, you don't reach your peak until in between 28 and 32, you know, and it just coincided. That was the sort of the years that I was at there. And yeah. probably played my best, my best footballer, you know, for, for yeah. those. I was, you know, the penny had dropped, you know, I'd always worked hard or fitness or I'd always trained, but I was really fit there, you know, and I sort of felt, felt as good as it can be, you know. It's messy as well. You, you as a player, you're 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 a footballer, you're a ball player. Um, some people may need their legs a wee bit more, but you're a wee bit more cultured on the ball, and you get that wee bit smarter, a wee bit more experience through playing. Yeah. It, like you said, that that's when twenty to thirty two can be your your peak years, your prime years. Yeah. You still have enough legs, but you have that 
you have that brain after playing yeah. for so long. Yeah. It, no, definitely, without a doubt. Although, you know, it's still, it, I'm, we're just still charged about probably too much sometimes. And even <laughs> still now, you know, it's, it's yeah. you know, even, you know, playing a pre season there and you're freaking charging about, and then, you know, reality hits home. Why are you doing this? You know, you know, you don't need to go looking the ball. And for me, we're playing in preseason against uh, the Murray Rack, and Aver was up. Aver Moore, who who had said he was up watching, and yeah. I, I spoke to him after the game, and he says I wanted to shoot at you in the first half. He says you're charging about everywhere. He says how many times have I told you? Just stand in the middle of the pits. He says the ball will come to you. You don't need to go looking at it. You know, so <laughs> you know. Sometimes you, you get carried away, you know, and but as you say, you should learn to when to pick and choose your, your runs and, and, yeah. and play with the ball more than, than than overworking, you know. Going back to Finnick game, was that when you was that when you went back into the coaching then or into the coaching or was there was there a year or two of playing before you went into coaching with Finnicky? Uh so played it played it that uh, for four or five years, uh, which was successful. Then Michael had left. Michael decided to step down at the end of the season, and I really didn't know. It was always in my head, you know. People laugh, it's, you know, but it was always wanted to go back to Finnegan. You know, there's yeah. been times of Finnegan, you know, my dad managed him in the eighties or whatever, or you know, there's always been family members play involved in the committee. So I always wanted to go back there. Yeah. So when Michael stepped down, him didn't had and didn't know what to do. Then Megal had had been working in the background to bring in a, a new manager, a guy called Sammy McFadden. Uh-huh. You know, and Al Simpson came in, big simple, who, you know, play, you know, Irish League. Yeah. These guys were coming down from the Irish League or Irish League experience. So I done pre season and really hit it off with, with Sammy and, and Simpe and they were brilliant, you know. So I decided to stay and we done done pre season. Uh, things were going well. Then they got the chance to go to the Swifts, Linfield Swifts. And Sammy was a big blue man, uh, yeah. you know, and it was just a job I don't think he, he could have tur- turned down. So once Sammy left, Robbo took the job on, who is a good friend of mine, Robbo, Mark Robinson, who does Nats. And Michael came back in to help him a wee bit. And I don't know why, it just Probably myself, it just wasn't the same. Yeah. You know, it wasn't the same. And we started the season and and played a wee bit. It was it was a hell of a side that that, that put together, you know, uh, Jordan Baker and all was there and you know, there was Sam McLaw was there and Niall Burke, the, the co- my younger cousin who's now at Finnegan with me, you know, it was yeah. it was an absolute brilliant side, D. Elliott, you know, there was younger players coming through there too. Derry actually went on to win one A that year, the year that I left. But for whatever reason, it just, it just my mindset wasn't in it, and yeah. I've decided to. I think it was time to, to move on, you know. So, I actually went down training with Finnegan. A friend of mine had took on the Finnegan job, a guy called Jonathan Houston, mm. and he he sort of progressed the club, and they've done really well over the last couple of seasons under him. Uh, and decided that it, that it would go down and and. Again, it was it was later on in the year, maybe it was October or something. Yeah. Uh, October, November, just decided that I wanted to go back and basically what I've done the last time, just get back playing and, and, and enjoying the football. So there wasn't many teams in two C that year. You know, it was a, I think it was only like maybe eight teams or something. Yeah. You only played like fourteen games or something or or that year, but Johnny it was enjoyable. It was a good, enjoyable environment. There was the nucleus of a, of a good team there, you know. Uh, but we, we didn't really do anything that season. We only won five or six games, finished fifth or sixth in 2C, you know. Mm-hmm. Then Johnny decided to, to step down as manager and Gareth Murray uh, took over. Gareth was a player at Finnegan and he, he decided to, to take the the management job on at the at the following season, you know. Yeah. It, Hindsight it, people maybe said, was it half a season too early? Should you, you know, directly won the league? You should have stayed, you know, you were captain there for three or four years. You should have stayed on, but you can't think like that, you know what I mean? You, 
you make your mind up and you can't look back, you know. That's what I was going to say, especially saying as we're going back on the Finnicky and it and the shortened season almost, and they didn't look like they were going to win anything. You end up finishing fifth or sixth. I was going to say, did you regret it? Then? No, I don't. I don't regret it. I can understand why people would say it, and you know, because I went from, you know, a team that were, that were really, doing things in one A. You know, they went on to win yeah. the league, as you said, and you know, people say you're going, you're dropping down to two C, but you know, it's okay to see that from the outset. But you know, I had still a desire to, to go back to Finnegate and try and do something, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and luckily, again, surrounded by good players the year after, you know, we were able to achieve that, you know. Did you win 2C the following year then? Then, the, the following year, the fall, as I say, we finished mid-table in that first year, then Gareth took over. So, on the 2C the next year, we got promoted behind Aquinas. I think it was right. Aquinas, it was. Aquinas finished first. I think two points ahead of us with, with nearly an identical record. I think, you know, so many wins and the losses. I think we only lost three times, but we yeah. had one more draw and they, they went up. But I think we won the last seven or eight games of the yeah. season. The, a bit like what you were saying before there, you said nine yeah. games to go. It, it was something similar to that. I think it was it was a crazy run. We drew away to Suffolk Swift. And I remember going in the change room and everyone was thought that was it. You know, yeah. and there's a few harsh words said, you know, by, by a couple of people, you know, and we sort of said, you know, bollocks, we're not giving up, you know, seven games to try and to see what we can do. And we ended up winning all seven, I think. We beat Lower Shangle in the last game of the season, 3-2. They were a very good say then as well, yeah. To be fair, they were in the driving seat, I think, all year that year. Yeah. The thing that cost them was, I think they went really far in the junior cup. They did, yeah, cup runs. Done yeah. really well in the cups. Yeah, yeah. And I think the last day of season they made the bit between our teeth too. And at three two, it was a tight game. But I think they were they were feeling the pace. You know that yeah. day. You know that 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 went really well in the cups, and it was just for us. You know, and yeah, with a good again a small small squad, but good players and and Gareth and and Connor were brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Them two years, two C and. And then the following year, when, when we got up to 2B, you know, it was it was a really good time, really good time. Uh, the next year, 2B, did you just get promoted to 2A straight away, or was there a... Yes, yeah, yeah. so we actually won 2B that year. Right. That was a year, I seen someone write on Twitter last night, asked, <laughs> asked me about the year it was fixed. I uh, William Lindsay, yeah. <laughs> it was, it was crazy. You, you, I can see why he said it was fixed, you know, you could never wrote, wrote that script, you know, it was, yeah. it was never talk all year. It was Aquinas, Green Island, and, and ourselves. And it was so tight with three or four games to go. Uh, I think we played one on a Saturday, played Green Island midweek. Uh -huh. And Green Island were in the driving seat. Uh, yeah. And it's something that's, that stuck with me because, you know, there were always competitive games. But Green Island came to Weatherburn that night. And, well, for me, I don't want to sound controversial, but... They could have won the league, but mm -hmm. they, did, they didn't try to win. You know, they were, they thought they coming to get a point that was probably enough to, because of the goal difference. Yeah. And, and I can understand why. The goal difference was, as I say, it was, they were six ahead of us or something goal, goals wise. And Drumbo were actually, we had Drumbo in the last day of the season. Drumbo were going well. But Green yeah. Island came that night and were happy to, to get a point, you know. And I actually fell out with a couple of Green Island players, which uh, maybe regret in hindsight because I was giving off to them, you know, saying, why well, don't you come and try and win the league, you know, don't, yeah. don't fucking camp in for a nil-nil, you know, you are sitting top of the league, come and try and win it, which was the wrong thing to say, you know, emotions were, were wrong and high and we thought we needed to win. Yeah, um, so <laughs> you're wanting them to come out and then you're raising yeah, that he's through the game. Yeah, it was so frustrating that, you know, and, Maybe maybe I had the blinkers on, you know, maybe they had more chances than I thought, but they yeah. they came to draw and 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 they got their nil nil and it was so frustrating because we believe we, ha we had to win, you yeah. know, and there was a few words said after uh, pa you know, I would be right and friendly with the guys in there when I seen them, you know, it was always but it was maybe something I shouldn't have said, but you know, at the time emotions were high and I was turned about because you know, I was, to me they were sitting top of the league. 
if you want to win the league, come and win it. You know, come don't, win it, yeah. don't sit down and get your draw and, and, and think it's enough. And I came back to beat them, you know, because we went to drum bow on the Saturday and we had to win by six clear goals, uh, which is crazy. You know, and Drumbo were going well. I think they were they were third or fourth at that time. Yeah. Uh, and it was at Drumbo. It was a big crowd up, some of the Green Island players. So at half time, we were 4 0 up. <laughs> and came in, and literally everyone was shaking, you know, just adrenaline was going. And I remember Gareth saying, keep a clean sheet. Don't be doing anything stupid early on. And let's see what, we're, what we can achieve, you know? Yeah. So we centered the ball and it went back to the one of the players at centre half, one of the cousins now. And he he passed it straight to their centre forward and he was in and scored to make it 4 1. And then he <laughs> conceded another stupid goal to make it 4 2. Uh, and you're thinking then that's it, you know, that's it out the window. But to be fair, we kept going, made it made it five, made it six, and then you're sort of thinking to yourself. That we could we could do this. I can't remember where it was seven or or what way it was, but we got a penalty. I uh, took a bit of stick that year. I missed a missed a couple of penalties in, in previous games leading up to it. But we trained on the Thursday night, and I took half an hour and, and practiced penalties, and you know was and training was nailing them. You know I just yeah. wasn't going to miss. So I went and got the ball, uh, sat it down, and friggin. At near hit, at near hit your house, guys, and John Bowles, to be honest, you know what I mean? <laughs> the ground could have swallowed me up, you know. I think that was the third penalty in a row I'd missed in the space of, I was always confident of doing them, but that, yeah. that last two or three weeks this season, flat me. So we're, we kept going, kept going, and there was a, a guy who's, who's still at the club now, Dan Scrap. Gareth actually left them out for that game, uh, and I remember talking to him at the start saying to him, look, keep your head up. You know, it's a big day for everyone. I think it was his first year in, in men's football. You know, don't be too disappointed. You'll get on at some stage. Yeah. And, and, you know, we can make an impact. And he, I actually came off and, and he came on. And I actually, it was 7-2 and it was the last minute. And I just remember him going down the left-hand side and cut in and he fired a shot and went in to make it 8-2. And flip, we went absolutely mad, you know. And that was... <laughs> That was enough to to win the league. But you've heard of you've heard of teams needing to win the last day, needing a point, and then even if you need a late late goal to maybe just win the game by a goal if you're drawn or you're getting beat or whatever. Yeah. But having having to win by six clear goals against a competitive team as well in the division, yeah, I'm clear. sure Green Island were coming up to celebration party. It was it was it was mad, you know. It's actually. But actually you done your best to try and fuck it up anyway, so you did your best. Well, that's what, saying, and that, <laughs> that's what Gar said. Fucking 4 0 up. Don't do anything stupid, you know. So yeah. we'll give away two stupid goals, and then I decide to balloon one from Drumbo back into Finnegan, you know, and you're thinking, <laughs> you're thinking it's done. And it's actually happened to me twice at, at Derriac, even we won the won the Clarence Cup. We were 3 yeah. 1 down, we're like uh, two minutes ago or five minutes ago. and we scored two goals in the last five minutes to, to draw three each and then went on to win it in penalties. Yeah. So we're lucky enough to it's happened a couple of times, but the one the one for Finnegy and 2B, you know, people saying when you went back to 2C, you know, why are you going there or, or what are you doing? It just felt like everything was justified in the space yeah. of, of two and a half years, you know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you could nearly say, well, I told you so, this is, this is why I came back, you know. Yeah, and you can win trophies, but your your club's your club. Yeah, well that's it. When it's something yeah. where you're where you're you're like I've lived in Finnegan all my life, you know what I mean? Yeah. Thirty eight years or whatever, you know. So thirty years, sorry. Uh, <laughs> you give it away. <laughs> you know, so that was that was special like and I'll never forget that day, you know, yeah. never. Coming into two A then they get was that Gareth stepped down then, yeah. Gareth stepped down, he took it to my rack job. You know, right. which was, I can understand why you take it because it's a, it's a fantastic setup. You know, I remember yeah. him phoning me and me trying to talk him out of it. Him and Connor both went. Connor was a brilliant fellow too. You know, the two of them were great. Uh, and I, 
I, I do remember saying to him at the time, I think if he had a stay with what he had done for Finnegan, there was more opportunities, you know, ahead for him to, to get, because he obviously had aspirations to, to manage it at a higher level, you know, and I thought deep down, if he could have stayed in, with Finnegan in 2A, I thought, you know, we could have really pushed on yeah. under, under his management. But, you know, I understand why, why he did take it to Murray Rack job and, you know, the rest is, is history, as I say. Yeah. Uh, at that stage, then, the club obviously needed somebody to step in and you would have been yeah. part of that during that decision and then you went into coaching at that stage as well. Yeah, well, that's that's how it started with Gareth stepping down, you know, and we'd had a, a bit of a, a meeting with senior players and uh, it wasn't something I would... You know, wanted to do, but I knew it was a good group. Um, the Karen and Robert, who who run the club, they had advertised for, you know, a manager after Gareth left. And I don't think there was, I don't, I, I can never put my finger on it why, because, you know, I don't think it was a big response from people wanting to, to take it on. Or yeah. Karen and Robert thought that. And maybe whoever did apply just wasn't the right fit or, you know, it, it wasn't going to work out. And we had a bit of a meeting and, you know, we're senior players and they thought that that I should give it a go. And, you know, I was skeptical at the start, but, you know, I did. And then contacted Barry Black, trying to buy Barry would have been, a, you know, a friend for a long time through his dad. Lesburn youth, yeah. the Lesburn youth and, there was always a, a connection there. He would have came and watched him and uh, Billy, his dad would have came and watched the guy. Okay? So to be fair, I had to talk Barry into it a wee bit. I um, yeah. needed him to help me out, you know, needed him to come in and sort of be the management figure and uh, and and sort of, you know, me to, to draw up the sessions or, or whatever. Something I'd never done before. I'd always wrote down stuff, yeah. you know, from Barry or from Barry Taylor and Michael, you know, jotted down me things and, but it wasn't something that I had planned to do so soon, you know. The, the last couple of years, I said earlier, you've been really competitive in TA. Um, also competitive in the Cups. I know last season, last season was probably a big disappointment for yourselves. The quarter final of Junior Shield, wasn't it? He's competed against East Belfast seconds. Yeah. Um, any other teams or cup competitions where you just came close or you felt like you, you could have won something right. over the last couple of years? Again, I'll say it again. Like, well, I've been I've been lucky from stepping this role. Same with playing up, surrounded by good people, surrounded by good players, and and from a ticket job on, you know we've been we've really have competed. You know we've got the quarter final at Clanch twice, yeah, and right. which is a, a feat in itself for two eighteen. You know the first year Sirocco did as well. Now you know we were in the game for the first half hour. After that, they sort of run away with the beat of six 0 uh, the other quarter final, the Clarence Rosemount beat us 2 1, which we were really unlucky. You know, I remember saying to the boys at, at half time in that game, Rosemount were phenomenal side, but they weren't quite at it that day. And, yeah. and I remember saying to the boys at half time, you'll never have a better chance here to, to beat Rosemount and get the semi final, you know. But yeah. they dug in as what they're, what they're good at, you know, and they ended up beating us 2 1. Uh, Willowbank beat us in the, in the quarterfinal of the Junior Shield in the same year. Mm-hmm. Uh, they beat us 3-0, which was a good game down at down at Olympia. Yeah. You know, again, the, 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 you know, you don't hide. You know, Willowbank were better than us on the day. You know, we we had a lot of possession. Probably something that they weren't maybe really used to. You know, us playing out from the back, them playing out from the back. It was, it was very sim- similar patterns in what we wanted to do, but they were, we couldn't trouble them, you know, flame at the back and we we couldn't hurt them going forward where they they punished us, you know, maybe we had four or five shots and they scored three goals, you know, they were, yeah. they were, they were ruthless, you know, and from the goal and they, they're a cracking side, like there's no getting yeah. away from that. You know, what was the other one? Tumbury in the Junior Cup quarterfinal. Junior Cup, yeah. Yeah. Hit. We were due to go up and it was called off with the weather. And yeah. it was the worst thing that could have happened to us because we knew the next week we had a couple of players missing. You know, so it was called off that week and we went up 
the week after. We actually rushed we Daza, who I was talking about earlier, rushed him back. He was having a hamstring injury. Yeah. Uh, we rushed him back just to play. Had to play a you know, centre midfielder and, and centre half. Had to plug a few holes. Not making excuses, but you know, the week before we're nearly full tilt. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm more ready to go and and the week after we just won one nil up early on and then one each. And it was end the end. And the longer the game went on, they you know, they just proved too strong, you know. Yeah, Tommy ended up playing Plunkett in the next round and we get beat by Plunkett that same year. It could have been yeah. Both of us playing the next round. Uh, so that's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I think Tommy beat Plunkett, didn't they? It was, I did. Mean, beat, I think Plunkett were winning 3 1, and then Tommy went back and beat him 4 3 or something. Uh, or something. Yeah. Yeah. It was a good game, so it was. Yeah. We were quite similar. Our game called off against Plunkett, then the week after, we had a couple of missing, but they had a few strong players back as well. That's... And we missed out an opportunity as well. But that's junior football. Like, like you yeah. said, you can't make excuses. No, it's not an excuse. Yeah. You know, no, it, yeah, you can't, you, there's no point. In, that's junior it, football. It's just it happens. You take it on it the does. chin. You take yeah. it on the chin. You move on. But we talked about it earlier on. The the, the squad. The squad. If, you don't, if yeah. you don't have a big squad, it's fine margins. You know, like the week before against Tommy, we were we were really confident. Everyone was there. Everyone was fit and available. Yeah. And when you, if it had been called off, you know, we may have not yeah. struggled, but you're 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 sort of plugging holes a wee bit there. Yeah. What killed us was we we ended up with no goalkeeper. Um, Dagny burned some mick, clipped on nets for us. Uh, uh, he is a good goalkeeper, but we lost a good left back in doing that. Yeah. Uh, and whereas the week before we had a goalkeeper with two other outfield players, one of our stronger players going forward, Robbie Gallagher, was missing the week after. And uh, what a player! I know a player that you, you can't really afford to lose in those games. And then we went two 0 up, and players start dropping like flies. And no disrespect to the players on the bench that day, but our bench just wasn't strong enough. Yeah. Whereas the three boys Plunkett brought off the bench that day were the three players who were missing the week before and changed the game. And the, yeah. in the end, then they went on to win the game. And uh, they were unlucky against Tommy because Tommy were a good side that year as well. So they were. Yeah, they were. They were. Uh, yeah. They went from strength to strength too, from the push on Plunkett, you know. Uh, Big time, yeah. But Bernsey's yeah. in as much as he did. Bernsey's good at that, he did. Yeah, well, you know? he will, all right, definitely. Uh, yeah. Last year, and then last year was East Belfast, wasn't it? Yeah. Last year was yeah. East Belfast, you know, yeah. which was, which was, to be fair to them, I think they had a few players missing that day. And, yeah. Uh, you know, and we just didn't, we just didn't perform, you know, to the levels that certainly in, in the junior team that were, we had been performing, and you know, uh, can't remember what way the score went. They went one 0 then we won each from the header, big G at the back, and then they got a penalty. And it was they had the guy up front. Uh, what's his name? The, the guy with shaved head up front, real, real handful, you know. But we had managed with him well all day. Yeah, but. He, it was a, he, he likes to stand on players and wrestle and, and you know and one went into the box and it was two two boys were wrestling each other there's no doubt but he, he went down the referee gave a penalty and a penalty. Uh, and that was it you know but there to be fair I know they had players missing that day but yeah. you know for a second team they, they're, they're, they're some outfit too very you know? strong yeah and it, they had it, players playing there that I would remembered time at, at their at 18 Cousins and stuff and, and we Onion playing who play for, for not Breda and stuff and you know yeah. they, they're a good, a good second team say they're a top three I said definitely yeah it, oh. your team it, it, you give your compliments as a coach as we're talking about you as a player as, as a coach as well you've always played football and you, you mentioned you touched on it a bit earlier you played from the back which a lot of junior teams don't bother with doing, but yeah. you can see that it's the way you like to play and the way you like your team to play. Um, and you, you stick to it as well, which is good to see as well as a team. Well, it's, as I always say, you give up time on a Monday, well, we train Monday and Thursday, you know. You're giving up, um, you know, an hour, an hour and a half every Monday and Thursday. You're giving up a few hours on a Saturday. Yeah. Not... They enjoy it, not to come and watch a keeper fucking drop the ball from his hands and kick it up the pitch. You know, that's, you know, and it's funny, you know, I heard Lee, Lee for Saint saying there, there's a formula to, to winning yeah. in, in the amateur league. And, and he's probably right, you know, Big Lee will probably say himself, 
you know, as teams probably don't play out their fact, they play effective football, they get it forward in the last third, they pick up the bits and pieces and, and they put pressure on teams. But, you know, it's just, it's just man, a different way of thinking, you know, yeah. for, for me and a different style of play. And, it, and it's cost us. And listen, it'll cost us in the future, guy. You know, teams know now we're playing from the back. And I understand there's time we overplay, no doubt. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's, it's trying to get that. That, that balance right you know of, of playing out and being no one wants to just knock it about the back floor all day you know it, it has yeah. to have a, a purpose to, to it. through the different yeah yeah it has to have a purpose to it and you've seen yourself you know we we can do it you know and when it comes off it's it's great to watch and it's a good environment to be to be involved in that's right see the boy you're here to enjoy it you're here to to try and express yourself you know yeah and that's that's what it's about. And yeah, I, I learned too. You know, I, you can't play it all the time. You have to have a you have to have a plan B if it's not working, or you have to 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 try something else. But first and foremost, let's let's get it down. Let's play. You know, express yourself. And you know, as I say on a Saturday, hard work you're given it comes first. Yeah. You work hard. And you try and play your football. And take it from there, you know. Everything comes after it. Uh, I want to ask you a wee bit about um, your career in terms of players you've played with. Um, the the best players you've played with in your career, or even coached as well. Played with. Yeah, or yeah, played with, and we can touch on against as well. Uh, well, played with, like I said earlier on, at the Murray Rack, Aver was. Aver, yeah. Aver was. And probably in the, the same stage that I'm at now in my career, you know, I was in his late thirties, but he just made the game game look easy, you know, and found found space for himself and didn't didn't try to overcomplicate it. But when he needed to, it, it was easy for him, you know. He could ping forty yard passes, and you know, and yeah, and he was a great influence on me too when I was younger. So much, and I still keep in touch with Aver now, you know. Yeah. But Aver would have been would have been up there. It's hard to play with. You play with so many, you know. Uh, keepers wise, Ian Lester. You remember Ian from? Oh yeah, smashing goalkeeper. Keeper, you know, yeah. and he's been a huge loss for for the club. You know me yeah. and, and the club. It's hard. The hardest things to find in amateur league football is a good solid goalkeeper and somebody's going to score twenty goals a year. Yeah. <laughs> See if you got both of them things. You're on the winner. You have a chance. Yeah, well, Ian, he's a phenomenal keeper, you know, and people, people that he, you know, he was a day, he played in the IC, you know, he played Craig McGee, you know, but he's been at Finnegy for, for a long time, but yeah, arguably the best keeper, uh, and people can laugh, everyone has their opinion, in my opinion, he was the best keeper, not in, in the amateur, one of in the amateur league, you know, without a doubt, you know, and yeah. with us playing out, it was easy because. He's, he's a good player out too. He can play centre half, you know. She yeah. used to be able to go back to him and people close him down. He'd drop a shoulder and go the other way and play, you know. And yeah, it's hard to replace. Although we've signed a young kid this year who's, who's you, you all know his dad, Dom, Dominic McEnhill. Oh, Dominic he, McEnhill, yeah. Uh, we signed Michael as, as son this year. Right. And that's, and Michael's come in and uh, we've actually two good young keepers. There's a wee lad from the state too, we James E. Watt, and the two yeah. of them are brilliant. But uh, Michael's actually come in as first team keeper this year. The two of them are brilliant working together, but he's been he's been really really good for us this year. And an area that we, you know, you need two good keepers, and, and we're looking to the yeah. So you know, and they're they're two kids. That they're only I think James was only seventeen, and Michael's only maybe eighteen or nineteen as well. You know. Yeah. Uh, wow. One of our former pupils at Running for us. Yeah. Bit of how I missed out. Maybe he was one of our former pupils oh. at driving school. Cat the quad. Center halves, uh, midfielders, uh, attackers. Any any player you can ever remember who was really tough to play against? Your toughest opponent, or is there a particular team you found really tough to play against? You always had, you know, obviously at the Aggie Crum and Star come up with us too. You know, they were. Yeah. They were always, always tough. To he's actually a mate of mine too. You know, Sean Brown. So I'll say he used to be manager, yeah. and so I'll say he was, he was different level like too on his day at centre midfield playing yeah. against him, and he used to snag a life out of me too if he got the, got the better of me. 
there was a, there was a guy guy when I first went with the Murray Rack, uh, East Belfast had a good side. There was a guy up front. I think was, uh, there was like Big Butter or something you called them. Scored a load of goals, but they had a guy in the middle of the park play, and I actually played against them in like a charity thing there last year. His name is Jordy Black Blackstock. Right. Right? You know, people from East Belfast or anyone, you know, would have heard of him. He, he was a, a super player. But I was young playing for the Murray Rack, and Jordy, I don't know the guy, so I hope we don't take this the wrong way, but he wouldn't have looked like a, you know, he was small and carried a bit of timber, and yeah. but he was a brilliant footballer, and he gave me the run around. And I was eight, 18 or 19, full of energy, you know, chasing balls down left around centre, and he... He would have been in the same as ever, well in his 30s. Fucking yeah. tortured me that day. And I'll never <laughs> forget it. And my dad was watching. And, and I remember coming home in the car. My dad's the biggest critic, like, but he didn't even say anything bad. He just said, that's, that, we were taught a lesson there today on how to, how to play football. Yeah. And this guy, you know, as I say, to look at him, you know, you you would have you thought nothing of him, you know, but what a player. And he absolutely... He absolutely roasted me out there. Yeah, had to learn from it big time. Yeah, you're yeah. you're at the stage now as well where you're you're running around TA and making young these young lads look, yeah, look stupid. I don't know, that. <laughs> I don't know um, but that's he that's a player's always that's a lesson, you know. Yeah. At the, there's no getting away from it. He absolutely destroyed me. Yeah. You know, and it's I never forgot to get up, like, you know. I want to go on to a couple of Twitter questions. Um Not that's something for, good. <laughs> of course, you were you were captain at uh, Derry Aggie. James Corbett has asked, it was because your daddy was the assistant manager uh, or made captain? Uh, that was Gary Duck, <laughs> was it not? No. I thought it was James Corbett. Gary Duck asked no. a few things as well. No, I think it was Gary. He's he's at his lock, that boy, you know. <laughs> okay, dad, dad came in. He was, I don't think he was involved the first year I was here. Can't remember, but dad and Michael go back uh go back a long way. Dad actually managed Michael at at Lisburn Youth, yeah. believe it or not. And I think Mega was my dad's paper boy as well around the estate. So right. uh, they've always had respect for each other. And dad would have uh, helped Mega out, you know, especially looking on, you know, maybe things that Mega made a missed or from the background. Because you know what it's like when you're involved, you don't see anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's nice to have someone just stepping back and watching the game. And, and, and dad would have been a a big help him and uh, Michael and Stevie Brown worked really well together. But I don't know where, where it was made. I don't know why he had a decision. Listen, he's my biggest critic. He, yeah. You know, I would say if it was his decision, he would have said no. You know, <laughs> he, even now, he's you know he's we played no Brighton Edge in in preseason and uh, probably didn't have my best game, shall we say. So the match was finished, and Dad was waiting at the car on me, and all the fin- all the Karen and Robert, the, the committee and stuff, were standing there, and a few players. Dad just looked at me, and goes, "You were shite today, you know, even <laughs> even at thirty eight, you know." So, oh, you're still getting it. <laughs> you know, so uh, I don't know if it would have been his decision. I'll say it was <laughs> Michael very long. Uh, Dinger Bells asked, "How long are you planning on playing for?" I don't know. That's a uh, over the last couple of years, I probably haven't played. If I hadn't been a player without getting big headed, I probably would have played a lot more. Yeah. But when you're involved in in picking the team, uh, you, you know, I would say I've maybe left myself out, you know, times when I shouldn't have. Yeah. If that if that makes sense. So over the last couple of years, the legs have, have held up have held up okay. Uh, this year I'd probably sort of said this could probably do me. Yeah. You know, in terms of in terms of of playing regularly, but with a squad that we've brought in uh, and a good group it is, I feel like I can, I can still contribute even if it's the last twenty minutes or you yeah. need you need to make a change. So it's probably a decision I'll not make until until later on in the year, but it's it, there's no getting away. It's probably not far away. You know what I mean. The the thing is as well, this season's gonna 
feed in the next season really quickly. So you may as well just keep going. Keep going. It'll, <laughs> it'll, no break. It'll kill me. I, I, you know, I love playing. Chief, I yeah. love playing football, you know. And if I wasn't involved in the management side or coaching side of things, uh, you know, I would happily play for, for our second team if it wasn't needed for the first, you know. Yeah. Um, under Jamie, you know, I, I, wouldn't, you know I, lo- I love playing, you know, but it, it, it is tough. You can feel the legs starting to go, and you know, there's times you come home and you're in agony and you go, That's it, you know, definitely at the end of the season. But then you go through a wee spell where you feel okay and you're, Oh, well, maybe I can keep going, you know. You can go in the sweeper and play like Danny Byrne, play until your late 40s. <laughs> you never see me trying to tackle people. That was, that was me playing centre half and be a bomb scorer. Make, make people think about it. Keep you know, away. Um, I would go further up so everyone could probably cover for me. I would say that's it. What's this about you having Gaza stay blonde hair? Yeah. When you, in the yeah. 90s, is this, why, is this why your hair fell out? Probably, yeah. It was, <laughs> was, was bleached off my head for about probably six or seven years. So <laughs> there's some shocking hairstyles. So, so ah, I think it's, it's probably better that I don't have any now. Yeah. Uh, Shay Kennedy asked, um, is there ever any club you've played against where you you or individual where you you raised your game more than any other game for because it, it meant that wee bit more to you? I, could, I wouldn't say there's an you know you depend on where you are you know if you were the Murray Rack you you play the Murray Young Men you raise you know if if you can call it raising your game because it was a derby you know what I mean or you know. You know, even Dariaki playing the Murray Rack or playing uh, the Murray Young Men or Suffolk or local teams, you know, yeah. when he playing forward, you, you know, you, you always get that with extra space. But I think you got to approach every game in the same manner. You know, your the desire should be there to, to take everyone at face value and go out and, and try your utmost, you know what I mean? So it's, it's hard to say that one. It's yeah. hard to say. Um. Mate, that, that's everything for me. Um, the last thing is just seeing as we're in different sections now, I can I can wish you best of luck in case we meet each other later on down the season. Well, so we'll for the season. We'll be in for a, a final, couldn't we? Exactly, mate. Yeah, hopefully it's not the relegation final. <laughs> it's the promotion final. But uh, uh, mate, best of luck for the year. And um, I hope to see you when when we can get back to normal to you. If we're both still there next year, I hope to see, uh, come against you again. And yeah, well, that's it. And, we can we can look forward to it, uh, trying to stop your free kicks fan in the back end. Up. Well, I would say by that stage, hopefully there's someone else there to, to, to do take that. free kicks. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, mate, thanks very much for getting up your time. Uh, I really yeah, appreciate sure. that you doing the episode for me. Um, the podcast is sponsored by Learners Australian School and Jumbo Park Racecourse. We'll be back with another episode next week, folks. Thank you.